There was, there was empires in Africa called Kush Timbuktu where every race came to get books Put my success to you, even if you wish me the opposite Sooner or later we'll all see who the prophet is Mountains we've been climbing Held us down but now we're rising See the sun on the horizon Now my people will be shining See the sun on the horizon Whoever made it now, this is how we do it And how we eat with the gods, you know May them bless me too Because I'm looking forward to today. It's been a very busy time for myself, to be honest with you. And um, it's down to Auntie Jean. I can't see Auntie Jean here right now. I can't see her. Can you give, make some big time African noise for our sister, our queen? That's what this song, beloved. Beautiful spirit, man. Beautiful spirit. And, um, you know, it's well worthy of love and respect that we actually do this with. And, um, okay. I'm just going to do a little introduction as to what I do in my work, okay. <laughs> okay, so it's about raising achievements and aspiring to climb as high as you can dream. So I work with many young people, as you'll see in a second, because I personally believe we must inspire to aspire. And as you know about inspiration and aspiration, it's all about your breathing. When you inspire, you breathe in, yeah? It's about your breathing. When you breathe in, your chest is large. When you aspire, it means that you look further, you go beyond your circumstances. Your aspirational dreams mean that you don't judge yourself by your condition today, you literally dream about what you want to do tomorrow. And in our school, we're some cussy I want to be able to get I want you to know where I'm coming from. Okay, the ignorance in which I'm coming from. In our school back in the day, and still carry on today's study, we used to cuss each other about being African. That's the ignorance. And our school is majority black. We'll cuss each other about who's the blackest. Yeah? That's the ignorance. And I don't want to talk about, I'm in the middle of all of that. Cussing off the same way, okay? In our school, I remember there was a young, beautiful black brother from Nigeria, Harold Oswald, I still remember his name. And he came to our school midway through, so like it was like a new start in year nine. And he started our school. Who are going to tell him to start our school? From Nigeria? Are you crazy? We cussed him so much about his black skin. And his skin was so beautiful, my queen. Beautiful blue black. Not a wrinkle in it. But we hated our school so much that the darkness of his skin became a shame. You know what I mean? So we cussed him. We cussed him. Now listen, why am I saying this? Because he was at our school for three weeks. Three weeks before he denied he was African. That's how much we made him hate himself. He said, I'm not African, I'm Scottish. And he sincerely tried to convince us that he was Scottish. Because of the self-hatred that we put inside of him. And that's the level, that's where I'm coming from. I remember those dark nights, but my heart's light. Can't see our past bright. Who said we can't rise? Who said we can't shine? 
don't believe them, this is our time. Our time. All these mountains we've been climbing held us down, but now we're rising. See the sun on the horizon. Now my people will be shining. See the sun on the horizon. Anybody recognize this guy? He's from Peckham. This is the first black doctor in Peckham, right? Do you know his name now? There you go. Harold Moody was, or is actually, a, a legendary civil rights activist. This was, this is a Jamaican guy. He was a doctor at the King's College, um, qualified, but couldn't get a job because he was black. In fact, when he went to get a job in the, the hospitals, they told him, we don't take any NIGGRs here. They actually put him back to his face. So he said, all right, forget you and set up his own practice in Peckham. In fact, his office, there's a plaque on his house, and the house is not far from here, somewhere around the corner, I forget the name of the street, but he has a plaque on the house we used to live in Peckham, this is the first black doctor Peckham. But apart from being the first black doctor Peckham, this man was also involved in civil rights. He set up a group called the League of Colored People. So he actually organized a group called the League of Colored People that used to meet in the YMCA opposite, you know what I'm talking about earlier, yeah? You know about Mid-Side Commission? So opposite Barbara Shelf Commission, there's a YMCA, that's where he used to meet. So he would organize for all, not all, a lot of Caribbean African people to get together to lobby for people's equal treatment when it came to housing, education, employment in this country. Here's another question for you. Will you black people in World War II? What do you reckon, people? Yes or no? Website. Well, now, the weather forecast with Peter. Hi there, I'm Well, on uh, notes for this weekend, the Imperial War Museum will be hosting the Black Poppies Film Festival, celebrating their achievements. The growing success of the festival is largely due to the hard work of one man, the amateur historian Tony Warner, and Errol Murray went off to meet him. It was one of these types of players which carried the damnedest as well, and they were also used on, on missions. Of Tony Warner has worked hard to publicise the contribution of ethnic minorities in the services. That's people like Alan Wilmot, a World War II veteran who at just 16 signed up for the Royal Navy. Buzzbomb. Uh, Buzzbomb, that was it, yes. Buzzbomb. At first, you know, it was a case of form. They know nothing about us. Because if they said, where are you from? And we said Jamaica, they said, what part of Africa is that? And they wanted to know where would I to speak English and questions like that. Tony knew little of the role black invasion servicemen played when he first came to the Black Poppies Film Festival a few years ago. The event is now very successful, but it wasn't always that way. When I last came to watch a series of films here at the War Museum, it was packed out. The first time I came, um, there were loads of empty seats. This World War II film about West Indian servicemen is just one of many on show this weekend. The festival's growing success is largely due to Tony's determination to promote the event. Not only have you helped to bring new titles along, but more importantly, you're a bridge into the community that we didn't have before. People don't know that there were something like 2.5 million Indian troops in the Second World War. They don't know that something like 5,000 RAF personnel who came from the Caribbean who sort of fought for Queen and Country. So these are all things that people should know. It's part of British history. It's not just a relegate to the black or Asian people or Chinese people. It's part of the whole history of the country. And if, if it wasn't for their contributions, then the war might end up with a, with a different outcome. The films have proved so popular that they'll be screened again throughout next year. Errol Murray. So the answer is yes. Do you talk about it? The answer is yes, of course, there were, there were hundreds of thousands of black people in World War II and Britain could not, could not win a war to about them. These mountains we've been climbing, held us down but now we're rising. See the sun on the horizon, now my people will be shining. See the sun on the horizon, 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 horizon. Now my people will be shining, shining. Rise above the clouds Rise above. for a long, long time. They had us bound. They want to keep tabs. Okay, now the idea that Black Britain started in 1948 is an idea that has been slaughtered by the likes of Tony Warner and so on. But let me add an unusual source that has slaughtered this idea that Black Britain started in 1948. My favourite newspaper, the neo fascist Daily Mail had an article, and the article said, pictured the 1,800 year face of Beachy Head Lady is revealed for the first time thanks to 3D scanning. 
possible she was the wife of an official or mistress of a Roman villa nearby. Unusually, Beachy Head Lady is from Sub-Saharan Africa, which was outside of the Roman Empire, says the Daily Fascist. And then they've got the reconstruction. And as you can see, and with a dodgy weed from Peckham. <laughs> now, what I wanted to find out is what does the establishment really think of the champs? What do they really think? Well, here's an establishment member just letting it all out for everyone to hear. BBC Newsnight 2011. What's happened is that a substantial section of the chads that you read about have become black. The whites have become black. A particular sort of violent, destructive, nihilistic, gangster culture has become the fashion. And black and white, boy and girl, operate in this language together. This language which is wholly false, which is a Jamaican patwa that's been intruded in the And this is my similar to how he says, a literally a foreign country. Okay, now this presentation, this is what I'm going to talk about. For the rest of this session, I will demonstrate that black people have contributed productively to white working class culture for years. It didn't start with the chaps. Now here's the thing, Dr. David Starkey didn't know this, but then again, Dr. David Starkey's a charlatan, which is why he pretends to be a historian and knows nothing about history. All right, my first theme is Black Britain and the white working class. My second theme is off topic, white popular culture and African Americans. And my third theme is complex origins of early British cultural heritage. Fact is I'm black and I am proud. So when you're talking about my people, better mind your mouth. They said our culture's dying out. They said it. See, they don't know what black pride's about They be lying fam, never see this lying down We ain't lying down, I can see we're rising now All these mountains we've been climbing Held us down but now we're rising See the sun on... Um, I'm just gonna perform a quick spoken word please So, if you can kind of keep the noise down at the back <laughs> No? Okay, um, I'm just gonna start anyways um, This piece is called yeah, this piece is called uh, My African King. Right. One look was all it took, his eyes entwined with mine, connecting without speaking, love without meaning. I mean without meaning to love, not knowing what it was, it was just. Gaze is so deep my stomach starts to speak. He taught me time becomes irrelevant when souls lead the way, lingering in my mind like the sun on a summer's day. Falling into the unknown with his love as my landing, knowledge of self leaves me seated and him standing. Ain't nothing better than a king that knows his power, vibrations down my spine as we share into the midnight hour. In love with my brown, from my crown down, he knows exactly what he has found. And I in him, nothing but king. The sincerity he speaks leaves dents in my cheeks. We free our minds, our love collides, side by side, never in front or behind. Liaising on the same page at the same speed we read. Divine confides, he was always mine. Just one more. Yeah. <laughs> I need to say a prayer, get on my knees and say a prayer. I ain't been a minute long, but I believe you now. I want to better myself, I want to be still, still in my mind, still in my eyes. Where I was in my head, it wasn't pretty. All the glitz and the glam sex in the city. 316, my head getting dizzy. All too messy for me, something was missing. It's so easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle of this life. Well, me, I've got my mum's timing. We call it moving in our own time. We call it moving in our own time. We call it moving in our own time. What a 
wanted it all. Chase the things that make me happy. Wanted it all. Should it make me happy? Wanted it all.